Welcome to Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. The deepest and best field in the Maui Gym Maui Invitational history. Highlighted by San Diego State. <laughs> Xavier. Gonzaga. Arizona. Illinois. Iowa State. Iowa State. Auburn. And Duke. Duke. Wow. See, they, they put Duke at the top. Hard to reach. Hard to get into. At the top. Come on. Welcome back to continuing coverage of the Maui Gym Maui Invitational, all a part of Feast Week. Presented by Lowe's, we're here at the Lahaina Civic Center. What a first game we had. Overtime was needed. And we're really excited about this next game as well. Number one, Duke, taking on San Diego State. If you're just joining us, you missed a great game. A really gritty, entertaining, hard-fought game as Auburn defeated Xavier in overtime to advance onto the first semifinal. The winner of this game will take on the Tigers in the first semifinal tomorrow afternoon. Welcome back to Lahaina along with Jay Billis. I'm Dan Schulman and let's talk about the Blue Devils because more than any other program this year they have been the talk of college basketball. It all started with what the freshmen did in the Champions Classic against Kentucky. Well first of all that really did hurt when Walt it was hitting like me hurt, with, yeah. that, with that or <laughs> we had a little back and forth about UCLA and Duke but Duke has an extraordinary freshman class. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski had number one recruiting classes before but somehow this one seems different. And part of it is they've got maybe three of the top five picks in the upcoming NBA draft if these guys decide to leave with Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and Cam Reddish. Each brings a different skill set, something they do extraordinarily well. But nobody brings the following of Zion Williamson. He really is a phenomenon. He is even more of a social media phenomenon than Jay Billis is. <laughs> and that's saying something. 1.8 million followers on Instagram. But the Blue Devils coaching staff, they always want to point out, he's not just a phenomenon on social media. He's not just a dunker. He's a really good all-around basketball player. Really good passer, very nimble with his feet. That's the thing that's hardest to wrap your head around, is a guy can be that nimble and agile at that size. 285 pounds but they're going to be going against the San Diego State team that is a proven winner and they've got length and athleticism of their, their own and they're going to be difficult to play against for a young team. Jalen McDaniels a potential first round pick almost came out after his freshman season and a tough cover 6'10 195 a tough matchup situation no matter who you put him on. Yeah and just a sophomore but Jalen McDaniels has a lot of potential very talented you mentioned he is long and thin but he's got a great motor and a terrific mid-range game that he's trying to stretch out to three-point length. The Blue Devils have come to Maui five previous times, and they have won the tournament all five times. A perfect 15-0 in this building over the years. A look at the starting five for the Duke Blue Devils, and of course, four of them are freshmen for the second time in as many years, really, but Mike Krzyzewski starts four freshmen, Jones, Williamson, Barrett, Reddish, and then the upper class for the man in the middle and Mark Quise Bolden. And for San Diego State, Jalen McDaniels is the headliner, but Devin Watson at the point, a very important guy. Matt Mitchell, strong, 6'6", 240. We'll find out very soon if he's the guy to match up on Williamson. Well, Matt Mitchell's going to guard him right away. Not many people make Matt Mitchell look small, but Zion Williamson is one of them. Reddish guarded by Jordan Shackle. Duke has played extremely unselfishly for the most part in their first three games. Beating Army in Eastern Michigan after the win over Kentucky. Shot clock is down to seven. R.J. Baird from the baseline. And down to the rebound is Devin Watson. And here come the Aztecs looking to get out in a hurry. And they get the bucket on the follow by Mitchell. Terrific job running the court. San Diego State is a very good defensive team. They're a gap defensive team. They're not going to extend. They want to make Duke into a jump shooting team. Barrett for three. The assist to Williamson. R.J. Barrett actually coming in as the number one ranked recruit in the ESPN 100. The 18-year-old out of Mississauga, Ontario. And he and Williamson, as we mentioned, they have shared the ball at every opportunity in the first three games for the Blue Devils. McDaniels guarded by Williamson, and that pass deflected out of bounds. R.J. Barrett is a lefty and a guy who can really run in transition. He gets to the rim. His shooting is not yet a strength along the lines of his transition game, his ability to get to the rim and to finish. He's an elite finisher. But when he does start knocking shots down with great consistency, 
you can't imagine how he's going to be guarded. Yeah, interesting that Williamson's a lefty as well. So those two great freshmen are both left-handers as Mitchell is fouled by Bolden. And this may be a tough team, at least this lineup that San Diego State has on the floor. This may be tough for Bolden to try to stay with whoever they decide to put him on. Yeah, they're, they're, they're clearly San Diego State was just trying to isolate Bolden, make him guard one-on-one. -on -one. Here's another opportunity for Mitchell to drive him. He's telling Jalen McDaniels to get out of the way just so he can drive. Good defense there by Bolden. Inside 10 to shoot. The ball in the hands of Watson, the senior point guard. He'll launch a deep one. And Trey Jones down with the rebound for Duke. Well, Devin Watson was a great scorer at the University of San Francisco in the West Coast Conference. Zion Williamson for three. Well, they wanted to make Duke into a jump shooting team, and R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson both hit jump shots to start this game. Trey Jones, who is guarding the ball right now, he's guarding Devin Watson. He's really a key to this team because of the pressure that he can put on the ball. And Williamson commits the foul out on the perimeter. San Diego State is smaller. And, but so far for Duke, as you said, they're great in transition. They're great around the rim. They've hit a couple of threes already in this one. Well, Matt Mitchell just hanging back right there because he wants to take away everything from Williamson going to the basket. So Williamson just pulled up for the three. And then Zion got caught in a switch. Wasn't really caught in it. They switched, knowing they could switch one through four, but just put his arms out and two hands on the ball handler against Devin Watson. Mitchell misses the left-handed runner, and back come the Blue Devils, led by Barrett. This is where Duke's so dangerous is in transition. And a foul on the drive going against the Aztecs. They get a missed shot, and they get the ball down court so quickly because any one of four guys can just rip and go. You get the rebound, you just go. It's not like you have to make an outlet yeah. pass. You know, Williamson can grab a rebound, bring it up. Obviously, Barrett can because he's got point guard skills. Cam Reddish can bring it up. Jones is the point guard. You know he can bring it up. Jones, the younger brother of Tyus Jones, who was part of the national championship team four seasons ago. Tyus actually was the most outstanding player of the Final Four. How are Trey and Tyus different? Well, they have different names. Thank you. Uh, actually, Trey, Trey asked me, he said there's been some mistakes on the air, that he's been referred to as Tyus Jones' brother, when in fact, Tyus Jones is Trey Jones' oh, brother. I'll make a note. And this is after Duke won the national championship back in 2015. I think Trey is a little bit stronger at this time in his career than Tyus was. Really good play. He's got to finish it. Yeah, I thought McDaniels would go up and dunk that, but he tried to lay it in. And Reddish will get called for lowering the shoulder. A nice job by Jordan Shackle to take that charge. Reddish did lower that right shoulder and bowled him over. Right there in legal guarding position and just thrust right into his chest. There wasn't much question about that call. So some early fouls called on the Blue Devils, but on the strength of a couple of threes, they've got a four-point lead. A one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure for Duke, trying to take some time off the clock, maybe get a turnover. And almost did when Watson tried to go between two defenders. Watson. Got Williamson in the air, and Williamson fortunate not to pick up his second foul right there. I don't know why Watson didn't shoot that ball. He probably should have gotten yeah. a foul call anyway, but he should have shot it. Boy, if they can get the second on Williamson, that would be huge for San Diego State this early. And look at this top runner for McDaniels. Perhaps a little unconventional, but a young man that's expanded his game. Jalen McDaniels is long and lanky. Went through the NBA draft process last year, came back. Gavin Delorier down with a miss, forces it up off the glass, and Williamson has it knocked out of bounds. Good battles underneath, and it's going to the Aztecs. Well, it looked like Devin Watson knocked that ball away when Williamson brought it down. A little pick and pop, and Williamson did a good job of staying in front, but McDaniels just able to get around him just a tad and kiss that off the glass. Good noise out of the San Diego State fans here in the early going. Watson the kick. McDaniels cut off. Mitchell can shoot the three. Off to Hemsley who can shoot it as well. A little bit of hesitation. Like too easy to get to the basket. Just missed it. 
You're not going to get an easier layup than that. It's almost like Hemsley was surprised that he was that open at the rim. And more substitutions now for Duke in the early going as Jack White has come into the game, the junior from Australia who really appears to have taken his game to another level so far this year. He just brings a, a level of toughness and skill into the game. Goes after every loose ball, always alert on defense, sets great screens. Great Good rebound. rebound. Yeah, Javon Delorier running it down. And that's what he has to do. Mike Krzyzewski said earlier this season that he wants him to concentrate on being a consistent double-figure rebounder. Trey Jones makes it 8-4. Duke's defensive schemes, they can really keep you off balance. They come with man-to-man. -man. They can come with that one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Timeout on the floor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau and VisitMaui.com. The Duke Blue Devils have come to Maui on five previous occasions, and they have won the Maui Invitational each of the five times they have come. And you can see this young freshman leading group. Obviously, they're excited, arriving in style, and pretty pumped up about the opportunity in front of them. Great field. I mean, just a great field here in 2018. Mike Krzyzewski, a perfect 15-0 in this building. And he caught up with Jay Billis a couple of days ago here in Maui. You've had quite a history here <laughs> since then, and especially in the Maui Invitational, your teams have performed extraordinarily well. Is there just something about this place? What, what's it been? Well, we had a, you know some amazing performances, whether it be uh, Wojo's performance against Arizona, I think in 90, 97, Mike Dunleavy was an MVP. Ryan Kelly went, went nuts here for a little bit. So we're hoping that one or more of our guys do that. But it's a heck of a tournament, and with this field, yeah, we have potentially, well, we have three or four top ten teams and teams get, that can win a national championship. And Mike Dunleavy is uh, here in the building right now doing a little scouting. And he was, we saw him a little earlier today in the hotel with his family. You forget how tall he is. Yeah. He's like 6'10". And he still looks exactly the same as he did when he played at Duke. Still looks 21 years old. Which you say about me all the time. Only different. <laughs> <laughs> little horn set right now for San Diego State. San Diego State has had some opportunities at the rim to make shots. They just got to knock them down. Hemsley corner three. Nice find by Watson. And Jeremy Hemsley was coming off the bench last year after starting his first two years, and he scored over a thousand points in his career. A really good player. He's got an unorthodox stroke. But he's consistent with that unorthodox stroke. San Diego State playing out of the Mountain West Conference. Picked second in that league this year behind Nevada as R.J. Barrett knocks down his second three of the game. Well, if he's going to knock that shot down, there's not much you can do. You don't want to say, most shooters, you say, hey, make him put it on the floor. You, put, you make R.J. Barrett put it on the floor. That's when he's more dangerous. Yeah, if his shot ever gets anywhere near the level of his driving ability, he's going to. I mean, he's a problem already. Oh. He'll be a real problem. The way these guys yeah. can attack the basket, if they can knock down consistent perimeter jumpers, forget them. Nolan Narain called for over the back. A little drive and kick here. Cam Reddish, who's got great skills. You just can't come off too far unless you can really stop the ball. You have to fake and recover. And on that possession, Jeremy Hemsley just came too far off and really overhelped there. Zion Williamson back in, went out after picking up his first foul for a couple of minutes. There at the handoff, Jones. If he keeps the floor spaced, it's really difficult to guard these guys. Williamson driving. And has it rejected. It'll stay with Duke, but a good job there by the combination of Shackle and McDaniels. And it takes a combination to slow this guy down on the paint. Well, San Diego State is a very good defensive team. That was a really good job by McDaniels of second effort. And they get in the rain and McDaniels on the defense. Shot clock at one as Jack White buries a three. Standstill threes. And if Jack White comes into the ball game and spaces the floor and knocks down standstill threes, how valuable the contributor is he?
Good defense by Williamson, and here he comes. The trailer is Jones, and that'll be an offensive foul. No basket on the play. A really good recovery by San Diego State. First to keep Zion Williamson from getting to the rim, and then Shackle does a really nice job of standing in to take that charge. That's the second charge he's drawn in this game. And, you know, Trey Jones just needs to pull up, take that short jumper, the floater. And Shackle's from Torrance, California. It's not far from where I grew up. Went to Bishop Montgomery High School. Really good shooter. He's a worker. Even little things as we sat at their practice yesterday. Every loose ball that was just rolling out of bounds. He was the one to go get it. Fire it back to a manager. Get it back and play. All the little things. Yep. Three-quarter court pressure by Duke is really bothering San Diego State. They're not able to get into much of a rhythm. And Watson, good call there. He just kind of held that ball on his hip for a bit and gets called for the carry. Ryan Dutcher, the head coach of the Aztecs, as you mentioned, a longtime assistant for Steve Fisher, both at Michigan and then for 18 years at San Diego State. Well, Brian Dutcher, his father, Jim Dutcher, was a longtime coach at the University of Minnesota. Very well-respected coach. And Brian worked for Lou Henson at Illinois and then forever for Steve Fisher at both Michigan and here at San Diego State. Wow, what a good job there by the Blue Devils. Double team on Williamson in the post. Kick it to Barrett. Extra pass to White. And Dukes knocked down five threes already in this game. Well, it's a good passing team. That's a second foul on Zion Williamson. You don't want to pick it up that far from the basket. You don't want to pick it up, period. But you don't want to pick it up that far from the basket. Double team inside. It's post to post. And Zion Williamson dribbles out of it. Can see over the defense. And then drawing two defenders, he can't come off ever a corner shooter. He just cannot do it. And Jalen McDaniels did to try to stop that drive by R.J. Barrett. And instead of giving up a tough two, they give up a wide open three. Williamson to the bench with his second foul. Now another turnover and a run out for the Blue Devils. Jones. And we have a foul call that will send Barrett to the free throw line. Well, there wasn't much wrong with that break except for Cam Reddish on the right side needed to run harder. If he were to run harder, he could have had a layup as well. And Reddish, and we don't know how much of a factor it is today. He has been bothered by kind of a nagging groin issue. It bothered him in the summer, came back a little bit. Uh, in the last game, only played 12 minutes of the game against Eastern Michigan as Barrett knocks down the first. Yeah, and by saying that, I'm not talking about his effort. It's more just the idea he, he could have gotten a basket there. Right. Jones out, and the backup point guard, Jordan Goldwire, checks in now for the Blue Devils. Sticking with this 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. And so far, San Diego State hasn't broken this to score. It's really taken a lot of time off the clock and doesn't give San Diego State as much time in the front court. They're really not getting into anything until about 15 seconds left on the clock. At 12 right now, Shackle, corner three, the assist to Watson. Well, we talked about what a good shooter Jordan Shackle is, and he caught that ball in rhythm and launched it right away. Just off the simple little drive. And again, coming off a corner shooter, you just can't do it. Would be by Mitchell on that baseline drive attempt by White. Golden called for it in the post, didn't get it. Spinning, turnaround, Reddish. Yes, how talented are these freshmen. And Cam Reddish has everything. He's got length. He's got skill. He's an excellent athlete. Deep range on his shot. And it's handles six, it like a guard. Yeah, and he's 6'8". He get it off over anybody. But he can't sink. <laughs> Watson with a very tough lay-in. Devin Watson scored a ton of points at the University of San Francisco before he transferred here to San Diego State. The scoring point guard, now 20 points per game two years ago in his final year there. Barrett out of the perimeter, guarded by Hemsley, now Goldwire. And Cam Reddish working off screens inside. Goldwire will put up a three. Good fake. Bolden creates a little space with the elbow and lays it in. On Duke's trip to Canada, the Blue Devils played three games, and I think it was 39 minutes that... Marquise Bolden played and he didn't score really didn't play well but 
Since this season has started, he's given really good minutes to Duke. He's really done a nice job. Mitchell, nice patience. He looks like a football player, and he's got he's got some brute force in his game, but he's got a lot of finesse in his game as well. Hey, he's just a sophomore he's from Riverside, California. Last last year, led San Diego State in steals. How about that? A little step back three there, and he whooped a little bit of shackle after the fact. Another three, this time for Reddish. Yeah, a little bit of talking after that, but boy, if you can do that, it's okay to talk. Beautiful step back move. How about six for seven from three point range for the Blue Devils? Hemsley, I mean, just forcing his way in there. Right now, San Diego State trading twos for threes. <laughs> Yeah, when your game plan is to make Duke into a jump shooting team and they knock down six or seven from three, what do you do? Barrett will try one. Good box out. Mitchell trying to go coast to coast and turns it over. Long stretch without a whistle. Got a timeout on the floor. Cam Reddish, Reddish fresh off that three. We'll take it to another level, going 94 feet with a illustrator on the other side. Hope his feet don't get cold. Ninety-four feet with Duke's Cam Reddish. Who's the best athlete ever from Norristown, Pennsylvania? Kyrie Williams. You're not gonna put yourself up on that list? Nah. All right, who's the best athlete ever from Apple Valley, Minnesota? Uh, Ty Stone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, pepperoni pizza. Favorite breakfast cereal when you were a kid? Uh, cinnamon Toast Crunch. What do you do outside of basketball? I like to play video games. What's your favorite video game? Call of Duty. Are you the best one at it? No, not even close. Who's the best? Probably Trey. All right, how, how often did you go to the beach growing up? Uh, not that often. Yeah, when you went to the beach, did you wear white socks? Never. Never? Never. Why are you wearing white socks now? That's all I have more. <laughs> That's how it came. <laughs> You're going to have a talking to by the equipment guy. <laughs> All right. What What is your goal for this season? Win a national championship. Right, we end it right there, 94 feet. Cam Reddish. <laughs> White Sox. Yes, sir. Pepperoni pizza, cinnamon toast crunch, video games, and White Sox on the beach? Which of these things doesn't belong here? Well, he also wouldn't wouldn't claim himself in any of those answers, but uh, but Trey Jones was standing right there. That's why he gave it the old Tyus Jones from Apple Valley, <laughs> Minnesota, a little, a little goofing on one another there. You know, Zion Williamson and R.J. Baird have both gotten so much attention and their enormous talents. Cam Reddish, if this is possible, has almost been kind of under publicized as a top five incoming recruit, a top five mock draft guy. But there there are so many highly thought of recruits on this team they got to share the spotlight what a rebound by Deloria and Matt Mitchell gets that rebound the overwhelming majority of the time when he plays but couldn't get it on that one McDaniels and a foul on Reddish second on Cam Reddish and when San Diego State is able to get a stop they did get out and run but getting stops has proven difficult thus far in the ballgame Interesting choices now for Mike Krzyzewski. Zion Williamson's already on the bench with two. Reddish will be coming out. You see White getting ready to check back in. Feast week is upon us, and Thursday it's the beginning of the Advocare Invitational from the ESPN Wide World Sports Complex in Orlando, beginning with Villanova and Canisius at 1.30 Eastern Time on ESPN2, LSU and Florida State. Also in the field, good-looking field down in Orlando. Do you know the uh, mascot of Canisius? The Golden Griffin? The Golden Griffin. Hey, very nice. Very nice. Well, I'm, I live in proximity to Buffalo. Jones knocked away. Nathan Mensa with the rejection for San Diego State. Hemsley open for three. And down to DeLaurier. But it seemed like all five Duke players were on the defensive glass. Hemsley was not going to let DeLaurier get an open look at a jam right there. That was a really good rebounding sequence for Duke to have that many guys. I mean, nobody was taken off early. They were all there to make sure they secured the defensive rebound before the possession was over. 
And at the line, Deloria. So much talk about the freshman. What does Mike Krzyzewski need out of Deloria, White, Bolden, those guys? for Duke to be the team they want to be this year? Well, primarily they need defense and rebounding and setting screens and being available. You know, this is a, you know, you're not expecting, even though Javin Delorier has improved his shooting, can knock down perimeter shots when he's open, you're not looking for any of those guys to be your primary scorers, but when the ball comes their way, to be aggressive and knock it down. And especially Jack White, because he's such a good perimeter shooter. He's going to have a lot of standstill jumpers if Duke moves the ball because there's so much defensive attention going to R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson and Cam Reddish. You know, and this is in the first half where Zion Williamson has barely played, and they're still up 11. Alex O'Connell in the game for Duke as well. Sophomore, terrific shooter, has made 50% of his career threes. Daniels driving on O'Connell. And a travel called on Hemsley. Kind of got between a pass and a drive right there. Well, he had Watson in the corner. He could have just shot it right away because he's wide open. To take the shot or shot fake and kick it to Devin Watson in the corner. And they reversed the ball and got what they wanted, which yeah. was two on one on the backside. They just didn't take advantage of it. A good job by Hensley to really jump in front on a triple yeah. handoff action. And really hounding Barrett on the perimeter. Jones lays it up. Too strong. And another Duke foul. This one on Deloria. That was the kind of defense you see often from San Diego State. Just gritty, get down and guard you, help, recover, and contest everything. I mean, this has not been easy for the Aztecs, but they have really hung in there. NCAA tournament team last year lost in the first round to Houston. Of course, Kawhi Leonard uh, played for the Aztecs for a couple of years back in 2009 through 2011. And you go back further than that, one of their most famous alums, and he wound up being a Hall of Famer in baseball, but Tony Gwynn was an outstanding basketball player at San Diego State. Now, still at the top of their all-time assists for Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn went to Long Beach Poly High School. His brother Chris was an outstanding basketball player and baseball player as well. Like San Diego State's had a bunch of good players. Yeah. Michael Cage went to San Diego State, Brandon Heath. I played on the national team one year with a guy named Anthony Watson, who was a great player. And back down to single digits. San Diego State down by nine with a couple of Blue Devil starters on the bench with two fouls. 1-4 low. He's trying to post R.J. Barrett. Barrett started in the corner, and as soon as Bolden came up, he just came in and posted right in the middle of the lane. Hard to guard. Timeout on the floor. Duke up by nine. Opening round action at the Maui Gym. Maui Invitational. And lots to do out here. I've seen other blowhards here, too. <laughs> Hi, it's Jay Billis from the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. I've got the tiki from old Mr. Hanale back in the Brady Bunch episode. So what could go wrong when I'm surfing? Everything okay, young man? Hey, Dan, you're unneeded as a lifeguard, just like you are as a broadcaster. Didn't know you could walk on water. Knew you thought you could. <laughs> well, Mom, looks like those acting lessons paid off for me back in the day. <laughs> Oh, what up. are you doing, Doug? You're yeah. snooping on me with the snoop cam. Dan's taking trying to a, get picture a picture of my picture. kid across the board. Yeah, yeah. sure thing. <laughs> Whereas Jay is just admiring himself in his phone. Turned the camera around to face himself. I'm wondering what should I, what I should say for uh, my Oscar speech after that acting performance. That was fantastic. <laughs> and how many people are going to get the Brady Bunch reference of old Mr. Hanalei? Here's the sad part. That was the third take of that bit. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen one and two. Jack White with another big play. And Zion Williamson back in with two fouls. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things. A lot of coaches will keep a player out with two fouls in the first half because they're worried about him picking up a third. And Mike Krzyzewski's always felt like, well, then you're playing defense on your own best player. And what, you know, what happens if he picks up the third? Then you can take him out then. Mitchell finds Watson. And 
Watson heaves a deep one. Rejection by Zion Williamson. Boy, so quick. Quick off the floor. Nathan Mensah should have shot that quicker, but still. And no basket. Zion Williamson went up to crash the glass after that miss. Let's take a look at the other end. Usually Mensa is going to be able to get that to go against most defenders, but Williamson at 285 is just so quick off the floor and so explosive. I mean, what they when when, when we were watching him in Canada, that that to me, I don't know about you, but that to me was the hardest thing to wrap my head around. You know, you've seen ultra quick, ultra explosive players, but not in that kind of package. It doesn't seem like a guy that big should be able to move with the agility and nimbleness of feet that Zion Williamson has. It's just, it's really, it's really kind of amazing. If somebody told you a guy is 6'7", 280, you'd figure he's a big, huge, back to the basket, you know, maybe a bit of a plotter out on the court, and Williamson is anything but. And I haven't seen anybody take a charge on him yet. <laughs> Nor will you. Yeah, well, it's not just because they're afraid of it, yeah. but just he, he's able to get around people. Right. Only one player in the NBA last season, Boban Marjanovic, listed as heavier than Zion Williamson. And he's 7'3", where Zion is 6'7". And we're told Williamson now is actually about, he's closer to 275 than 285 for what it's worth. But, I mean, he's still, like if you told me this guy's an NBA, uh, an NFL tight end right now, I'd believe it in a heartbeat. Just he look could, at I think he could be yeah. one. Who would tackle him? Somebody who had a lot of friends. You, would, you wouldn't do it alone. <laughs> Somebody who had help. Yeah. Sticking with this one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. I, I think San Diego State's got to break this to score. Uh, Shaq over with an air ball from the three. They did a nice job getting a good look there. You know, the issue for San Diego State isn't, hey, can, isn't, can they guard? They can guard people. Can they score enough points? Wow. And Bolden all over the back of Shackle as he picks up his second foul. This is not an easy game to play in. You know, San Diego State is used to being there on the catch and being physical and being in the right spots, even though San Diego State is a young team. You know, they're mostly freshmen and sophomores as well. They have you know, Jeremy Hemsley and Devin Watson, who are older players, but most of their other guys are younger. Ryan Dutcher will work in these freshmen over the course of the season. We've already seen Nathan Mensa. In this game, a guy who figures to have a pretty big role for them as Shackle knocks it down. He's just a sophomore, as you mentioned. Shackle knocked down 27 threes last year. He's coming off a game against Texas Southern. He had 16 points and seven boards. Can they challenge Nevada in the league? Nevada's so good this year to get so much back. Can they challenge Nevada? Yes, they're capable of beating Nevada, but Nevada's the best team. And as Jordan Brown, the freshman phenom at Nevada, really starts to learn how to play. And primarily he's going to have to learn the defense, how to guard ball screens, how to play harder all the time, which is a big adjustment for any freshman. You know, Nevada's going to keep getting better. Barrett, step back, short. And Barrett, slow to get up. Went down, got up, slipped. Numbers for the Aztecs. Williamson the save, and it's Duke Ball. Going back against four defenders, San Diego State does a pretty good job of getting back. The Blue Devils have missed their last seven attempts from the field, and this one's going to go against McDaniels of the Aztecs. Yeah, McDaniels just going after the ball. It looked like he put out that left arm a little bit. And Tim Kelly right on top of it. Just going after the loose ball. He yeah, looked like he might have grabbed his arm just a tad there. So watch, watch his left arm. You can't really see it there, but it looked like he had his arm wrapped on the inside of Zion Williams. It wasn't quite a hook and hold, but just enough to pick up a, a loose ball foul, essentially. And one and one. Blue Devils with that 34-point win over Kentucky to start the regular season. And then in their second game, though, Jay, Army gave them a battle. Army was in contact with Duke well into the second half. The Eastern Michigan game was, was more of a blowout, but they got a little bit of a test from Army. They saw zone from Eastern Michigan, and obviously in this tournament, they're going to get a real test over three days. Yeah, I think they'll see a, a good bit of zone throughout the course of the year just to make them prove it over the top. 
Watch him the shot fake. Couldn't get by White though. And he does have an excellent shot fake that he uses quite a bit. Now the drive and kick. Mitchell's got a good look at a three. Shackle had it and then had it taken away by Barrett. Delorier off to Jones. Still lots of time. Good move. Wow. And that's going to count. Boy, he just jabbed to his left and he was gone right. What a beautiful move. A crossover. Man, that was big time. He got it to finish as well. He got hit like three times. But the foul might have come on the floor, but there was even contact when he went for the shot. Number two on Shackle forces him to the bench, and we get our first look at Adam Seiko, a redshirt freshman from Boston, coming into the game after the Aztecs. Adam Seiko went to Sierra Canyon High School in California and was a teammate of Marvin Bagley III. Wow. And at the line is Jones. You talked about it, how important he is. He's not going to have the numbers of the other three guys. Different kind of player, gets them involved, but in many ways just as important as the other three guys. Yeah, just he's, he's going to be setting the table for everybody. Mitchell hangs and draws the foul. Mitchell, a guy who originally committed to Cal State Fullerton, but then had a big senior year in high school and wound up opening up his commitment again and went to San Diego State. He's coming off a 21-point game against Texas Southern. He's got a good understanding of how to play. Second game here with the Maui Gym Maui Invitational, which continues tonight. If you weren't with us earlier today, what a game we had in the opener as Xavier fought back from a 12-point deficit to force overtime only to see Jared Harper and Auburn pull away in the extra session, winning 88-79. The Tigers get the winner of this game. Bottom half of the draw, Arizona and Iowa State, and Gonzaga and Illinois with Jason Benetti and Bill Walton bringing you those games later on this evening. Well, Jared Harper was terrific, and that dunk he had late in the game off that little flat screen was really impressive for a guy 5'11 to rise up like that. Chris Clemens of Campbell had a dunk almost as impressive. Great back cut. And Antonio Brankovic, who just checked into the game with a beautiful bounce pass for the assist. Just really just a little dribble at. And oftentimes, anytime you dribble at another player, the best thing to do is back cut. With an open floor, that's really hard to guard. A switch with Rankovic now on Mitchell. That's a tough cover for him, trying to stay with Mitchell on the perimeter. Rankovic from Zagreb, Croatia. He really does a nice job of being a presence inside when he comes into the game. That was obviously a great pass. And a senior, really been a leader, president of the old Trinity Club. And this is where Coach K, he can have a Bolden or a Vrankovic in the game to have a true big, or he can have Williamson as the five, or Delorier as the five, and they don't they don't use the terms one, two, three, four, five. Coach K favors positionalist basketball, not you know, stereotyping guys into one position, as many coaches do these days. But he could put all sorts of different lineups out there. Yeah, really, the the numbering is more a function of who you guard these days. You know, Duke plays five out motion. They do have set play calls that they use. They have different guys that can bring it up every time. I mean, Cam Reddish bringing it up now. And so all of a sudden, you got Matt Mitchell trying, basically guarding as a, a defensive point guard. That puts defenders in different spots on the floor that they're not used to being in. Foul on Seiko will send Barrett back to the line. And, and R.J. Barrett, as McConnell gets set to check back in, R.J. Barrett seems to have the ability, Jay, to draw a foul just about every time he puts the ball on the floor. Yeah, he is really good with the ball. And he's got great second jump, just reactive off the floor. I guess that happens when your godfather is Steve Nash. <laughs> His dad, Rowan, who's here, was a terrific player at St. John's, played overseas, as Jay mentioned, his godfather was Steve Nash. Barrett in a game that he played against Cam Reddish led Canada to a win over the U.S. at the 
under 19 championship in Cairo back the summer before last. 38 points, 13 rebounds. U.S. team coached by John Calipari. Yep. He's seen a lot of R.J. Barry recruited him. McDaniel spinning and hitting. Nicely done. Uh, you can see that's the middle game that Jalen McDaniels has. He's going to keep getting better and better. I mean, he, he doesn't even weigh 200 pounds. No. They try to put some weight on him. They can't figure out how. You and I could give him some ideas. Yeah, we put on some yeah, since exactly. we got here. He wants to hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> Jones for three. Yes. Boy, just any dribble penetration, if you help off, there's an opportunity for a wide open shot. Standstill threes are going to be a big deal for Duke this year. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. And Courtyard by Marriott, the official hotel of the NFL. <laughs> and white socks on the beach. <laughs> a look at what the freshmen have done today. As the four freshmen have combined for 30 of the 40 Duke points. I think Jaywell is uh, is totally overlooking good skin care. I mean, you like to stay out of the sun, wear sunscreen, big hat. Nice look from McDaniels, and Seiko knocks down a three. Well, Adam Seiko. He's really a glue guy. He can stay in front on defense. Just a solid, complimentary player. White from the corner. That was, that was a, a contested three. That, that was better off a shot fake, maybe a drive or a pass. Barrett, three feet behind the line. The foul on Brankovic. If he and the rain were really jostling down low is a good block out. Frankovich tried to knock the ball back out for maybe somebody to grab it right around the three-point line. And it just came over the top. That was a good block out. Two guys going after the ball hard. That's one as a big guy always drove you crazy when you're you know, he wasn't going for the going for the rebound as much trying to knock it out. Brankovic becoming the fifth different Blue Devil to pick up his second foul here in the first half. So Mike Krzyzewski keeps some of the guys in and out, trying to hope that nobody picks up his, his third. Williamson has sat on a number of occasions because of that. And a couple of misses. If he gets the ball down court quickly, a poor pass by Cam Reddish, and then an equally bad pass by San Diego State to just give it away. And Daniels was racing up the floor, was not looking back, expecting a pass. And Roger Ayer is trying to stay out of the way there. Hope he's okay. He took a little, little spill. He didn't fall, but he sort of slipped. Look at the game along with Tim Kelly and Paul Sells. With, here in the second game in the mound. Tim Kelly's special significance for him in this game. His 16th wedding anniversary this week. He was here 16 years ago on his honeymoon, and he was a high school official. One of the officials here went down, and Hank Nichols, the supervisor of officials here, called him and said, "Suit up, we need you." And it started a an excellent career in college officiating. I don't think his new wife was that happy about it. <laughs> Shot clock at eight. Barrett thought about it, pulls up from 16. Well, he's got game, doesn't he? He's so good at so many things. You know, you're trying to find something he doesn't do as well. And you say, well, he's not a great shooter. But when he goes straight up and down and he's on balance, and he makes shots. And he's going to be a really good shooter. One of the things that happened, I think, in the games we did in Canada is 
you know, you look at halftime or look at the end of the game, you say, yeah, he's having an okay game. He's doing this, he's doing that. And then you look at the end of the game, he had 33 points and nine rebounds and five assists. And he can, he can sneak up on you quietly with some pretty big numbers by the end of the game. Well, and he had to put up numbers because they were without Trey Jones and Cam Reddish. And just getting a little screen here from Javon Delorier and you know, forcing Mensa to step up and try to put some pressure on the shot. But he just rose straight up. Everything was completely in rhythm. But how about that last drive by Matt Mitchell? Pretty good body control when he went up and threw that foul on Delorier. Yeah, sometimes they play him a little bit more on the perimeter, sometimes a little bit more in the post, depending on who else is on the floor at the time, as Rankovich comes back in for Deloria. And the foul situation for Duke has shown that, you know, Mike Krzyzewski can go deeper into his bench than maybe some of us might have thought at the beginning. There's number three on Deloria while he came out. He's got three, four other Blue Devils, each with two, but they've got an 11-point lead. Jones finds Reddish, 10 to shoot. Look at this matchup. Guy, yep. He can get a shot. Barrett and McDaniels in a terrific matchup of tremendous athletes. And behind the play, we got a foul on Mitchell, and he is furious right now. Got to be careful he doesn't get teed up. That yeah, was after the play. And they're saying he just rode Brankovich out. Kind of rear-ended him out of the way. Got underneath him and backed up a step or two. That's the call. He fell on me is what Mitchell is saying. Well, that's kind of the argument that, that guys would make. Is wait a minute, I'm blocking out, and the other guy jumped. You know, it's just physics. But the physics argument with referees doesn't work very <laughs> <No>. well. <laughs> yeah, now they have to look at it to make sure it wasn't some sort of flagrant or hook and hold or anything like that. That strikes me as just a basketball play, but there's been a, a greater sensitivity to things this year to make sure that you know, it's not flagrant one, flagrant two, that there's not some sort of, you know, player's not in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. But you know, I don't know what, it didn't look like that was much of an undercut there. This just seemed like it was a basketball play. I'm not going to argue whether it was a foul or not, but Mitchell was blocking out, Frankovich jumped. And so, like, what's the guy supposed to do? Now, I'd be shocked if this were a flagrant, but, you know, start sort of predicting the way this is going now is really hard to do. Like, what's he supposed to do? Now, if you're saying if the, if the and they're not going to call anything more than just the regular foul, foul, but. So they looked at it, no flagrant. It remains a common foul on a Mitchell, and double bonus, it'll be two free throws for Rankovich. It is, it's interesting that the monitor use. I had somebody tell me recently that, that's a, a higher up in, in basketball that they had talked to people in other sports. And everybody in another sport said, no matter what you do, don't allow expansion of replay. You'll never get it back. And you know, once it's in, you can't once take it's it in, back. You can't yeah. take it back. And we've got so many things we're looking at on replay now. And I'm not saying it's wrong. Everybody wants to get it right. But it takes an extraordinary amount of time. And it kind of takes the air out of the building in a lot of occasions. And I don't know the right answer, but more replay isn't the right answer. Better get it across. Final minute of the first half. Duke up a dozen on the Aztecs. Watson driving on Jones. Good job by Jones. Yeah. Stay in front. And three-second call going against San Diego State. That was just good defense to stay in front, make Watson make a shot over you. And he refused to take the shot. If it weren't a walk, it could have been a three-second violation. The first, or what would you call the first half for Duke? I, I would say it's been methodical. Yeah. I think they, you know, they've constantly been subbing in and out because of foul trouble, so a little choppy here and there. But methodical in a yeah. good way. Like, yeah. they're, they're, it's been, it hasn't been their tempo, and still they put up 46 points. Right. And they've knocked down eight threes. They started off incredibly hot, started off six out of seven, and now eight out of 16 from beyond the arc. And San Diego State is a good defensive team. 
Nathan Amenso, one of the freshmen, turn around, no, and Abrankovic got his left forearm or elbow up in the face of McDaniels, and it wouldn't surprise me, Jay, if they had a look at this one. I don't it, think they will. It wasn't a hook and hold variety. Unless somebody says, hey, you know, he hit me in the head. He did hit him in the head. He did, yeah. He got, I mean, he got the left arm up above the, the neck, and that's well, they've got a, the typical one they look at, actually. But Ed Corbett is over there as a as the alternate. He can tell him, hey, take a look at this, and he's not doing it. He's not saying anything. He's got a monitor over there. So Vrankovic picks up his third. He and Delorier now each with three. Dwayne, you're right, though. You know, when there is contact, there's such a sensitivity now for anything near the head. And a 30-second timeout taken by Duke. They get the ball up 14 with a chance to set up for the last shot of the half. So many beautiful sights here on the beautiful island of Maui. And we are blessed and lucky to be here to cover this tournament. The Maui Gym Maui Invitational. Two more games coming on a little bit later on today or tonight, depending on where you are. It'll be Arizona and Iowa State, Gonzaga and Illinois. And we're going right through Wednesday. Steve Fisher, who coached here for San Diego State. They got to the championship game back in 2014 before losing to Arizona. I love Maui. <laughs> I love the banyan tree. There are 80 beaches in Maui, Dan. It is Dan, isn't it? It is Dan. Barrett. Reddish. Got it. How about that? Doesn't need much space, does he? Doesn't need much time or much space. 49 points in the first half in a game where San Diego State basically got its tempo. Nine of six. A team you wanted to turn into a jump shooting team hit 9 of 17 from 3. And they've got their largest lead of the half at the half. 49-32. Led by a team high 16 with RJ for RJ Barrett. Including some threes for him. Let's go back to the studio now for the E-Trade Halftime Report. A bunch of guys in white socks on the beach. Welcome to Feast Week. Presented by Lowe's. Heading to the second half, Jack White jabbing to Laurier, and the Blue Devils are up 17 on San Diego State. What's more fun than a green screen? Like, honestly, what's more fun? And Jack White's Australian. He's yes. such big waves down yes. under. We're here with the Maui Gym Maui Invitational in Lahaina. And the freshman getting it done for the Blue Devils again. Duke made nine threes in the first half. R.J. Barrett with three of them. And they get a 17-point lead. Trey Jones did a nice job running the show, getting to the bucket. Cam Reddish, he hit a couple of threes. His specialty, that one, a step-back three. And Zion Williamson, despite playing only seven minutes, had some foul trouble, and they protected him a little bit, made an early three, really got him started way back at the beginning of the game. What would you think of the performance of the Blue Devils in the first half? In a game in the first half where San Diego State, you'd, you'd have to say, had its tempo uh, in the ball game, yep. and it wasn't it wasn't a crazy up-and-down tempo. Duke still put up 49 points. I mean, they shot the ball extraordinarily well from three, made nine threes out of 17, I think it was, in the first half. But that was a, a smooth 16 points by R.J. Barrett. It didn't seem like he was necessarily taking the game over, but he wound up with 16 points, four assists, no turnovers. And you know, how good is Cam Reddish? He's good right now. He's going to be even better. Barrett with 16 to lead Duke, and Mitchell with nine to lead San Diego State. Reddish, again, a spin and a step back. High degree of difficulty. Can't knock it down. Here come the Aztecs. Hemsley, right over Barrett, lays it up and in. You know, at halftime, San Diego State talked about making a run based upon its defense first and that was getting a stop and taking it the other way to get an easy basket but i think san diego state's got to try to score more off the first option terrific double team there are two double teams in a row zion williamson passed out of the first one couldn't get it out of the second one mcdaniels and a foul and one a great start here in the second half for san diego state and it's come off the defense the double teams on zion williamson in the low post First one, he passed over the top. Second one, it was deflected and stolen. And R.J. Barrett going up off that little shot fake by Jalen McDaniels. And McDaniels keeps his head up as he goes up. Never took his eyes off the rim. Offensive rebound on the missed free throw. 
Hemsley, nice look. Mitchell, you need to take that. Watson with that shot fake again. Oh, what a rebound. Williamson just going over the top of McDaniels, which is hard to do. Jones, left hand. Boy, just went right into the defender with his right shoulder, knocked him back. Now it's an up and down affair after the McDaniels miss. Numbers for Duke. Jones open for three. That's the tempo that Duke wants to play at. How and fast did they get the ball down the court? And it's back up to 18. Ten made threes for the Blue Devils in this game. And nearly turned over. Knocked out of bounds by Barrett. Ray Jones taking the ball to the basket. Watch what he does. Just goes into the chest of Jeremy Hemsley and then is able to get it to go with the little scoop shot with the left hand. Shackled to McDaniels. And Barrett another rebound, and here they come again. Rip and go. Whoever gets it can take it unless it's the five. You, just, you almost can't get back yeah. fast enough. Because you're used to an outlet pass being made, then you pick up the point guard. And, you know, there's nothing slow about this fast break because whoever gets it can take it the other way. It's, as long as it's not Marquise Bolden, everybody else can just rip and go. I don't think it's a good health move to chest bump Zion Williamson. <laughs> there's no such thing as a friendly with yeah, Zion it just Williamson. Doesn't, yeah. It just doesn't seem like that's no. overall for your... Your general physical well-being, you know, that's a smart move. This quartet of freshmen, they kind of became buddies before they started committing. Had a group text chat and one by one started committing. Jones the first. Hemsley switches hands, had to adjust, and Bolden is called for the foul. The winner of this game is going to take on the Auburn Tigers in a semifinal tomorrow. Auburn defeating... Xavier in overtime, 88 to 79 in the first game. Not a lot of shots made in the first half of that Xavier Auburn game, but the second half was how well played was that game? That was really fun with great pace and intensity throughout. Jeremy Hemsley at the line for San Diego State. Hemsley's a an interesting player. He's a senior. He's had a really good career, but he had what he would call a tough year last year. He came off the bench. You know, he played behind. Trey Kell and Devin Watson, a very experienced backcourt. And it was it was hard on him to come off the bench. It didn't, didn't really work at first. But he battled through it and now back as a starter. I think his confidence has really come back. Reddish in the post right now, spinning on Shackle. And Williamson and one. Well, you can put Coach K can move players all around like like a bunch of queens on a chessboard. They can do just about everything. You can isolate Cam Reddish in the post. He got doubled. He got caught along the baseline and winds up giving it up to Zion Williamson. But look, you know, you, you would have thought that he could go right over Shackle and knock him over and bowl him over, but he gets by people. That's really kind of the interesting thing of his athleticism and how nimble he is. It just it's, it's hard to wrap your head around. Third foul on Shackle moments ago, and now the third foul on R.J. Barrett reaching in. I think, Dan, there's been a lot of people who have perhaps, maybe I wasn't clear, misunderstood. When I say there's never been a player in basketball like Zion Williamson, it doesn't mean I think he's the best player I've ever seen, or he will be the best player. He's not as good as LeBron James. But there's never been this kind of package of size, explosive athleticism, skill, you know, at that weight. It's really... Really hard. It's hard to fathom, and, and it's impossible to come up with a comp to come up with a guy who has in every area. In every yep. area, they, that player just doesn't exist. Reddish forces the issue, and McDaniel's commits the foul. You would have to say, okay, well, if Lawrence Taylor was really good at basketball, that's who you'd say it would be. Or you know, back when Julius Peppers played, Julius Peppers was a terrific basketball player. He wasn't like this. I mean, the story's been told about the vertical leap for Williamson. They had, you know, the pole with the plastic. The measure, the, the vertical, vertical leap, vertical leap. And, yeah. and he jumped too high for it to 
They had to make it high. They, they had to yeah. put it up on a stand or something yep. so they could calculate his vertical leap. And the guy weighs 280 pounds. They had to put like weight plates under it yeah. to raise it up a, few, a couple more inches because he out jumped the machine. <laughs> Largest lead of the game now for Duke. San Diego State had a great first minute here in the second half. Scored the first two baskets, but it's been all Duke ever since. Good help by Bolden. Wide open three on the weak side, though, and knocking it down is Watson. Devin Watson's a nice player. And San Diego State's going to get better and better as the season goes along. Reddish. Ball wasn't in his hands very long. Quick release, but he missed the three. And Watson called for the reach-in foul. Looked like he might have just slapped the ball away, but he gets whistled. You know, after Duke's performance, take a look at Zion Williamson going up. Yeah, that was just a, just a bad angle to be going after the ball when the official's behind you. There's no foul there. But, you know, after Duke took apart Kentucky in the Champions Classic, you know, they were the talk of the sports world for a couple of days, and that's that's one of the reasons why. I mean, that's the guy who you you were noting may have been under publicized. Right, yeah. <laughs> Cam Reddish. But there was some talk that maybe maybe Duke could beat the Cleveland Cavaliers or something like that, which I don't I don't think is even a discussion point. But watching again, how they would do what I think is a great barroom discussion is how this Duke team would have done against the Fab Five back in 91-92. That would be a heck of an interesting game. What do you think? I think it would be a contest. I mean, they, they that Michigan team lost nine games that year. That bucket is going to count. I don't want to make this connection, but everybody that's done 94 feet is killing it in the Maui Invitation. <laughs> I'm just saying. They're going to be lining up to do it with you. They are anyway. Yeah. Reddish. Taking a bump and finishing. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. As we mentioned earlier, Brian Dutcher worked a long, long time under Steve Fisher. First at Michigan before San Diego State. He was part of the coaching staff and one of the guys who recruited the Fab Five, that outstanding quintet of freshmen that spent a couple of years at Michigan and making it to a couple of national championship games. There's Coach Dutcher, Weber, Howard, Rose, King, Jackson. Barrett, Williamson, Reddish, Jones, Joey Baker may be a redshirt candidate, but if you had a little pickup game, five on five, who'd win? Well, the hard part in making this comparison, one time, I get this a long time ago, the game was different. But, you know, you, you tend to, with the older team, take into account what they became later. Do you remember what Chris Weber shot from the free throw line his freshman year in college? No, sir. He shot 50%. And... You know, look, this Duke team, I don't know if they'd win, but they'd be pretty darn close. Chris Weber has made the point that back in those days, because players didn't come out early very much at all, that they were playing against older players and a higher caliber of competition than these players are playing against Older guys today. always say that. <laughs> they always say that. And it's, it's amazing to me that, you know, they would not listen to that argument but if we said, well, the teams in the 70s were better than you guys, Chris Weber, or they would never listen to that. Yeah. And I get it. it look, but that's an argument for, for the us old guys so when we're, you know, in, having a drink at the bar at the golf course to talk about how great we used to be. And I don't, I'm not putting myself in that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying your era, how great your era was. Uh, but... You know, there's no way you would get the guys in the Fab Five to say that that the players in the 60s were better than they were. They, they'd never, they'd never even listen to it. R.J. Barrett, his fourth, less than five minutes into the second half, he's got a game high 19. Well, if nothing else, as you alluded to in the first half, this is forcing Mike Shashevsky to go a little bit deeper, use some different lineups, and find out what kind of combinations work for this team. They all seem to work pretty well. So everything works, yeah. but but you know it's not. This isn't the the only test. So if this happens against a team that can score a little bit easier than San Diego State can score, and San Diego State is good. I mean, you, 
you you have to play well to have a 21 point lead on San Diego State and Duke is playing well but you wouldn't want to have this kind of foul trouble in a different kind of game and we've had a ton of fouls here in the second half we're five minutes in and each team has already committed five fouls here in the second half and it's not like we've had bad calls we haven't I mean, these have been fouls So some of the members of the coaching staff for Duke, all four of them, well, first of all, played at Duke, but all four of them played here in the Maui Invitational during their careers. Nate James, Chris Carwell, John Shire, Nolan Smith. Delorier, good position, Williamson follows it. The ability to get off the floor a second time that quickly for a guy his size. So it looked like he got hit on the first one, and that second jump to get off the floor, and, and, and that rebound wasn't necessarily in the area of his first shot. He had to move to get that rebound out of his area. Corner three, Hemsley too strong, and Reddish down with a rebound. Good pass, wow. Jones ahead to White, the ball never hit the court. That was beautiful. What a spectacular pass from Trey Jones. Rebound, terrific outlet, but to the sideline, and a bullet to Jack White. He not only can surf, he can run the floor and lay it in. Here at the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, we're all about big fish, and there are a lot of big fish here. Duke, Gonzaga, Arizona, Xavier, 27 Final Fours, six national championships among these eight teams. And I have to catch Bill Walton an ahi tuna because he's got the munchies. We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> One of the best lines in movie history, no matter in what context you use it, and here's a look at the bracket. In the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, Auburn has advanced to play the winner of this game. And Duke's up 25 right now. So things keep going as they're going. Sets up a pretty interesting early season matchup. And Bill Walton will overcome the munchies and be here with Jason Benetti for the two games later on tonight. The question is, will Jason Benetti overcome Bill Walton? <laughs> Many have tried. But Dave Pash will be watching those games just to just laugh so he can, yeah. Share the experience a little bit with Jason. It's like an MMA fighter watching somebody else in the octagon. <laughs> Five to shoot. And a foul committed by Deloria. One of the interesting things about Duke defensively, remember last year they went mostly zone toward the end of the season because they were a lot bigger. They had a harder time guarding the three-point line, guarding ball screens. That alleviated that for them. And they, they turned into, toward the middle end of the season, a very good defensive team playing out of that zone. But this team, look out. Get out of the way, Jay. Doesn't matter. Every game, it's going to happen at least once. But this team can get out and guard, and they can switch at four positions. Watson with a high arc and jumper. Here he goes again. Knocked away. Bounces to White. And Aztec ball. Here comes McDaniels. Got Mitchell ahead of the pack. Good pass. Watson open. And out of bounds to San Diego State. Now, time for our play of the game, driven by Continental Tire. Any guesses? Which one is it? <laughs> Knocking the ball away down to the other end. That is a sturdy test of whether your breakaway rims work. I'll tell you, that's an unmanned camera, and it was still afraid as Williamson went in there. 25-point lead, loudest two points of the game. Belonging to who else? Zion Williamson doesn't play a whole lot because of foul trouble.
Barrett and Delorier both on the bench with four, but it's still all Duke right now. A little double stack low. Great move. Spins by Mensa and draws the foul. He'll be headed to the line for two. Boy, really decisive spin move by Marquise Bolden. His first two years, he had to battle through injury, couldn't get any rhythm going. Had a lot of good big guys he had to play with and mostly behind. But now, as a starter, he's got more minutes and is really starting to really starting to come on. He was a McDonald's All-American, one of among big guys. He's got really good feet. Sometimes tough to reconcile what a guy, what it was thought a guy was or would become versus what he is right now. And if he can be pretty good right now, I mean, maybe not live up to the expectations that were thought for him two or three years ago, but he can still be a really important player on this team. Well, he is a really important player. The hard part, I think, for, for any player, and it doesn't matter whether it's a Duke or anywhere else, when you go play guys at Kentucky, Michigan State, you go play with other really good players. You know, sometimes, especially if you have an injury, as he did, he would, you know, uh, Marquise Bolden was starting his freshman year uh, over you know, Harry Giles, all those guys, and then he got hurt. And that really set him back, and sometimes it, it's more difficult to recover. Williamson with another steal. Goldwire and O'Connell in the backcourt right now for Duke. Nice look. Drew a crowd, found Bolden, and Bolden heading back to the free throw line. I don't know what you say about Zion Williamson in the open court, except look out. You know that Duke has to, they've actually practiced that if he breaks the backboard, you know, how can they get a replacement in there? I mean, his eyes are right on the rim here. What does Dan Dockett say, put your chin on the rim? It was! <laughs> Uh, Shamori Pond's one of the uh, most exciting and talented guards in the country. Really. He can really yeah. score excellent off the dribble. Another guy that can really play is Marvin Clark, who transferred into St. John's from Michigan State, playing for Tom Izzo, left-hander. St. John's one of the more talented teams in the Big East, and the Big East is a talented conference, although I was a little surprised what the Big Ten did to some of the Big East teams in the, in the Gavit games. Uh, the Big Ten way underrated going into this season and Michigan looks like they could be along with Michigan State and Wisconsin the class of the league. Yeah, Wisconsin beat Xavier. Indiana handled Marquette, beat him by about 25 and Michigan just dismantled Villanova 73 to 46. How about the start that the Wolverines are on to follow it up with wins over like GW and Providence, right? John Beeline's team going to 5-0 and already. Well, what a play by Jordan Goldwire. Right there to jump that little dribble handoff, jump right in front as the action was going toward midcourt. Jordan Goldwire was a guy that you know Duke when they when they took him hadn't really seen in person. They'd seen him mostly on tape and decided, you know what, he's a good player. We need another guard. And he has worked out to be a, a really reliable substitute for him. And with Trey Jones coming back from a hip injury during the summer, Jones did not play on the tour to Canada, so Goldwire got to start in all those games and you know, played 25, 27 minutes a game up there. Four seconds on the shot clock. And it'll be Hemsley to inbound for the Aztecs. McDaniels, Nathan Mensa. They got two Mensas on the team, but they are not related. Nathan and Joel, both freshmen, both from Ghana but not related. Banked in at the buzzer for Seiko. McConnell pulls up. Haven't said his name a whole lot. Terrific shooter. Hasn't been playing a ton of minutes this year, but another guy off the bench who's going to be important if Duke wants to get where they want to get. A little dribble handoff action with Zion Williamson where he went over and set that screen. And I mean, how are you going to get around Zion Williamson when he decides to screen you? You are going to stay screened for a little while. 
Connell again. He can do that. He can really shoot it. Yeah, he shoots it with ease. And very energetic. The next step for Alex O'Connell is just to be a more reliable off-ball defender. Just be in the right spots. Hemsley lost it. I thought you were going to say the next step for Alex O'Connell is to settle on a hairstyle. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> jealous of that. I've, I've settled on mine. Yeah. Not by choice. That was my choice. Nearing the midway point of the second half. And Duke on its way to another huge offensive output. Spinning and finishing. Williamson again. You just don't see guys that size do that. You know, Williamson and Barrett, both left-handed, have an unbelievable ability to get to their left hand, even though you know they want to go that way. Hemsley, nobody got in front of them. Everybody hugging up on their man and when the ball is in the middle of the floor, it really eliminates weak side help. You just have to be able to guard the ball and stay in front. In traffic, White, and a foul. Now Zion Williamson got caught in the air, was still was able to fit that ball through there. That's one of the of the impressive things about Williamson. One of the more impressive things is he's able to find people. He's a very good passer. Got a feel for the game. I mean, you don't, you don't advocate that kind of pass very often. But still, when caught in a bad spot, he can make that pass. Only available on ESPN Plus. Earn everything. An eight-part all-access series on Duke basketball. Your chance to follow Coach K. Williamson Bear with the rest of the team. As they prepare for the season, as Williamson gets a seat on the bench, start your free trial of ESPN Plus now and watch all eight episodes. It's actually very cool, Earn Everything. It's a, very much like Rolling with the Tide, which was awesome. And I've watched the whole thing, and still my favorite part was the yo thing. Yeah, yo was funny. It wasn't fun. That was my yeah. favorite part by far. <laughs> I kind of like the glass floor part of the CN Tower in Toronto, too, yeah. when they were up there. Yeah, of course, you take it to Canada. Of course, Canada. I Everything's about Canada. <laughs> you know, there are 10 different provinces and three territories. Careful, because I'll ask you to name them. I can. All of them. I can. <laughs> Good cut. And Reddish with an incredible reverse. What a feed by Jack White. You talk about length, the fact that he could get extended that far to get under the bucket and then have the English to get it in as well. Well, it was just a, well, he's, he's spoken English since he was born. I mean, good but just it was a terrific cut. And when Duke has really good spacing, that opens up those cutting lanes. And anytime you overplay, you, know, you can just back cut, which he did there. Then you can come off a dribble handoff and you're going to be open. There's so many different options. It's just a great read by Cam Reddish and an excellent pass by White. Offensive foul on Jack White. Take a look at Reddish. That's him there. He just he got Hemsley to jump the lane, and then what a finish off the glass. Goes right by Narain, gets it off the bottom part of the glass and in. Jack White loves it. And that's when you can accept. If you can do that, it's acceptable to wear white socks on the beach. 32-point <laughs> lead for the Blue Devils. Eight minutes to go. Mitchell follows up his own to miss, but the ball belongs to White. And here comes Goldwell. Jack White, another big game off the bench. Ten points and seven rebounds. I don't know if we're going to be calling those big games for Jack White much longer. It's going to be sort of the norm. He's really good. And Barrett on the fadeaway jumper is fouled and will be at the free throw line when we come back. Well, Dan Schulman likes to wear black socks and sandals to the beach. But Cam Reddish is more of a white socks guy. And you know what? It's working. He's so cool, it might come back into fashion or into fashion.
All right, Matt, thank you. And we're done in seven minutes and 43 seconds. Duke up 83 to 51. R.J. Barrett at the line right now for the Blue Devils. Five and double figures for Duke today. The four freshmen and Jack White. And this is the kind of team they figured to have where one day it could be Barrett, one day it could be Williamson, one day it could be Reddish. Three of the four freshmen on the bench right now. I think Barrett's free throw shooting will be interesting. He's had a good day today. Missed that one, but he's a seven for nine from the line. But he's a guy who's going to live at the free throw line. If you look at the numbers for the four freshmen in this game. Antonio Brankovic has done a really nice job in this game. Alert on the help side, able to help out on that drive and force the, the turnover. Justin Robinson into the game for the first time. The fo former walk-on, now a scholarship player, the son of the Admiral, David Robinson. Uh, he can shoot it. Flew in on the same plane with David Robinson. And I thought I had a tough time fitting into a seat on an airplane. <laughs> can we tell the Admiral to get off the phone for a sec? His kid just got in the game. Well, unless he's trying to figure out how to, uh, he is. He's trying to figure out how to take a picture of him. Now I know how. Oh, sideways is good. Everybody's the same, aren't they? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Duke, cool. Duke has like 40 photographers yeah. here, and the parents are still taking them. That's great. Isn't it awesome? And what great kids the Robinsons have. Not just Justin, but Corey Robinson that yeah. played football at Notre Dame. Couldn't be a nicer kid. It's ridiculous. Not surprisingly, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. There he is. He's into the score sheet. Hope Dad got that one. <laughs> Yeah, I did that once or twice in my career, too. <laughs> From the corner, long jumper, long two for Matt Mitchell. But isn't it funny that, that with all the high-level basketball David Robinson has played, he is probably more nervous watching his kids play than he ever was yeah. as a player himself. And he's just like every other parent in that regard. That's awesome. Robinson's got some talent. Here's the reaction. Whoa! <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great. I didn't know he had that in him. You know, most of these teams wind up doing this. Uh, uh, they do testing uh, early on, athletic testing, and. You know, they put the they put the players on a treadmill and, and test their their lung capacity, all these different things, and so it's, it can be grueling. And Justin Robinson came out came out on top and all that stuff. I mean, he, he did an amazing job, really pushing through, tired in that. And the lead grows for the Blue Devils. San Diego State, again, they made a little dent into it very early in the first minute of the second half, but the Blue Devils have just taken it to another level ever since then. Walk a rope is into the game, a freshman born in South Sudan. This is him, grew up in Omaha as he leaves the three short. And again, the Aztecs have some pretty intriguing freshmen. A rope is one of them. Nathan Mensa, who we've seen today, is one of them. We have not seen... Joel Mensa, we may see him a little bit later on in the game, but Brian Dutcher's got some pieces to work with. Yeah, a rope is going to be very good. You know, he's been a pleasant surprise thus far. Really long-armed, almost a 7-2 wingspan. He committed initially to Nebraska, but then took a prep year. And he's just a, he's a gifted defender. McDaniels still in the game for the Aztecs. And remember, everybody plays three games in three days, regardless of what happens. So you lose today. All right, but you got another game tomorrow, and San Diego State's going to play Xavier tomorrow. And playing Xavier is a physical affair. You know that. So you are uh, I, forecasting the early, yes, early I, voting. Yes. ESPN News reporting yes. that <laughs> is projecting Duke to be the winner. I think I went out on a uh, fairly solid limb on the Banyan tree <laughs> on that one. So, uh, uh, fifth foul committed by Chavin Deloria. You know, interesting with Jalen McDaniels, he's got a younger brother who's a high school senior right now. As you take a look at what's coming up, Monday Night Football, Scott Van Pelt coming up. Post-game coverage of the Chiefs and Rams. Phil Mickelson talking about the showdown with Tiger with the worst beats of the weekend. 
Jalen's got a younger brother, Jaden, who's, I mean, he's up there. He's like a top 10 prospect in the class of 2019. The Aztecs are in on him. They've taken good care of his older brother. He's gotten better. He's developed. He's also looking at some of the typical top schools. I think Kansas and Kentucky are both on his list. But boy, wouldn't San Diego State love to get another guy as talented? Who knows, maybe even a little bit more, a little further along at the same age than Jalen was. Watson open, deep three, yes. 13 for Watson. Now coming into this game, San Diego State had won 11 of their last 12. And this is a program that they've been in postseason 12 of the last 13 years. And seven of the last nine NCAA tournaments. Fake. White with a strong drive, challenged near the rim, and the foul is going to go on to Mitchell. know if it's opportunity development or a combination of the two but he's just he's just way further along than he was last year in a much bigger part of everything that's going on with this team it's sort of the the natural progression it's like an, an old school way to go about it where a guy came in and you know you worked hard every day in practice maybe you didn't play as much you played behind some older players he's just playing behind he had been playing behind some younger phenoms but he's had the natural progression of a of a really good player He's more mature. He gets it now and it's worked harder. You know, both he and Jordan Goldwire over the summer, they were in with the coaching staff every morning at 7 o'clock. And I think the coaches, the two coaches, wanted to show both of them that, one, this is what it takes. And then, two, you're getting the same attention as our quote-unquote you know, star players. And I think both Goldwire and Jack White responded really positively to that. Things that, that Jack White's done is he's embraced his role. Well, his energy, and we've seen it in the early going this season, saw it on the tour in Canada as well. The, the, the nose for the ball on the offensive glass is something he's got. Maybe it's not a nose, maybe it's just hustle, but he's got an act for being where the ball is. Okay. The ball usually finds the most energetic players. Yeah. They're in the handoff action, their elbow series. McConnell got off a really good shot the last time they ran that. No starters in the game for Duke with the, the size of this lead and just over four minutes to go. And again, three games in three days. If you can buy a few minutes here and there and save some legs for what's coming in the next couple of days, that's always a win. Well, it's a good opportunity for guys that don't normally get bigger minutes to get big minutes. And then it also allows... You know, Williamson, Reddish, and Trey Jones, Barrett to uh, sit a little while and keep their legs a little bit fresher for the, the stretch run in this tournament. And the ball battled for between White and McDaniels comes down to O'Connell. Under four to go. And another convincing, impressive performance by Duke against a good team from San Diego State. Yeah, San Diego State's just not ready right now to be able to put up enough points to, to challenge Duke. They can, they can defend, but they just can't score enough points. Goldwire will be at the free throw line when we come back. Duke 335 away from advancing to a matchup with Auburn. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Maui Gym Polarized Plus 2 Sunglasses. The view's better from here. I love Maui. I love Maui. I love Bill Walton in a shirt. <laughs> Bill Walton in a shirt. Maybe with some deodorant. <laughs> Not a good place to be no. under the near the underarm of one and, and shirtless I, Bill Walton. And I think it bears saying we're not even showing the outtakes, yeah. like the really tough stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we're not was, showing the inappropriate the, Bill right. Walton. Yeah, these were the ones that got that got through the editorial staff <laughs> and our bosses and all that. Uh, Auburn defeating Xavier in a first round game earlier today here at the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. It'll be the Tigers and the Blue Devils in a semifinal. 
tomorrow here at the Lahaina Civic Center, which is jam-packed. We talked about it in the first game. Just a great field. And eight programs with a lot of tradition. But when you look at schools like San Diego State, Iowa State, Illinois, whether they're having by their standards a great year or not such a good year, the tradition and the passion from the fan base is really great. I mean, you, you know the Orange Crush. Sure. You know Hilton Magic. I mean, it, there, there are great fan bases for all of these schools. Yeah, and it's one of the great parts of the, the Maui Invitational is the fans show up and they're passionate, and then the setting is fantastic. Well, Heine Civic Center is one of the great places to watch a basketball game. And you know, how about the, the tickets for this game, for the Duke games? I mean, I was told that the tickets were good. This ticket was going for over $600 wow. on Coconut Hub. <laughs> Coconut Hub. Well, how long? When did you decide that that line was going to make there? So rope goes coast to coast. Was that on the plane over? It was or? just now. No, it just no, came to be just no. now. <laughs> when, when you watch as much Gilligan's Island as I do. That's true. Because Gilligan's Island, the, like the, the crew of Gilligan's Island, you know, the skipper, Marianne, the professor, they could do anything with coconuts right. except make a boat. Right. <laughs> Mostly the professor. They couldn't make a yeah. boat. They could make a radio. They could make all these other things, <laughs> but they couldn't make a boat. You're, you're dating yourself, but I love it. That, and that's, that's one of the failings of, of television is there has never been a remake of Gilligan's Island. Like there have been Brady Bunch remakes, all these different remakes. There's never been one of Gilligan's Island. There needs to be one. Well, they, if not, if nothing, maybe not a series. How about a movie? That's what I'm saying. Or just like, a yeah. two-hour movie. Yeah, should have said a movie. Yeah, that'd be awesome. There comes our tour, two-hour movie. Be great. <laughs> Robinson. But this will, you probably don't know this, but the point guard for my high school basketball team, we played basketball together from fourth grade through high school, is Jim Denver. And Jim Denver's uncle, his father's brother, was Bob Denver Gilligan. Gilligan. That's awesome. Did you ever get to wear the hat? Did you ever get that close? Like, no, but he does. Gilligan when we play golf something? together, Jim Denver still wears a bucket hat and looks <laughs> remarkably like Gilligan. I just don't bring it up to him. I don't think it's, it's proper for me to tell him in his backswing, you look just like Gilligan. Because <laughs> he might turn around and say, you just look like a skipper. That's right. <laughs> and you'd lose that one. <laughs> Travel on O'Connor. Ryan Dutch has got a little bit deeper into his bench as Ed Chang and Joel Mensa have both checked in. All right, I, I gave you a lot of trivia in Canada. Here's some trivia for you. Right. The skipper in Gilligan's Island. What was the skipper's real name? Not the actor who played the skipper, which is Alan Hale. What was the skipper's real name in the show? It was actually uttered in the very first episode when they were listening to the radio and they listed all of the, uh, the crew that was lost at sea on that three-hour tour. That was the... On the USS Minna. Yeah, that was the only time it was ever mentioned? I think it was. All right, what is it? Jonas Grumpy. That is the skipper's real name in the show. Wow. You're welcome. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How did we get here? Uh, <laughs> I came by a plane. <laughs> Michael Sohikish, a walk-on out of San Diego, checks in now for the Aztecs. Mike Buckmeyer's in the game as well for Duke. And it'll be Duke and Auburn in a semifinal matchup. The Aztecs, they'll have to regroup. They got another game coming. They will take on Xavier tomorrow afternoon. Michael Sohikish, one of the great stories. He was a manager before getting in uniform, being able to suit up as a player now. He's got his jersey last season. He majors in civil engineering. Final minute, jump stop, O'Connell had it knocked away. And here comes Sohikish. Let's see if maybe he can get a shot up. He could be the second former manager to score in a game this week. Grant Kersey at, uh, at Virginia, who was a manager that Tony Bennett gave a uniform to, knocked down a three in a game. I think it was against Coppin State. Oh, should have taken that one. That was a cool moment for Virginia. It was awesome. Yeah. Seiko draws the foul. Nobody works harder than managers. They are the hardest working people in show business. And you're, you're the champion of their cause these days, and they love you for it. Yeah, and I don't even get, like, extra Gatorade during the games. <laughs> Arizona student managers off the bus, leading the Wildcats in for their game with Iowa State as the basketball continues here in Lahaina. Brandon Williams, a very talented freshman guard, a guy to keep a, an eye on for Arizona. Brandon Williams and also Brandon Randolph, who may be the best pro prospect of the two, at least right now. 
And there are a lot of pro scouts that are here to watch this tournament. There are a bunch of prospects. And there's also some nice beaches that they may be yeah. here. Yeah. And maybe some golf being played. This is this is the one where you know you don't see you see more general managers here than anything because they decide who they decide on who goes where. And look, I'll take Maui. You guys, how about the rest of you? You go to Grand Rapids. Yeah. You, you go to Syracuse. <laughs> a run out for a rope if he can corral it, and good hustle. Robinson may have gotten a piece of it as the game comes to an end. The number one ranked team in the nation, the Duke Blue Devils, beat San Diego State 90 to 64 here today to advance into the semifinals where we should have a very interesting game against Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers, who needed overtime to beat Xavier 88 to 79. Two more games coming tonight, gonna be a lot of fun. 90 to 64, the final already underway college basketball continues. St. John's taking on Cal in the GotPrint.com Legends Classic. For Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching the Netty and Walton tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Let's go to Bob with Susan and Fran Priscilla now in Brooklyn.